Thank you Patrick for this, wonderful, introduction and thanks to all the committee for attending today. In this presentation I will present some of the research I have been conducting as an associate professor at UPMC for the last 10 years. To explain the structure of this presentation, I present on this slide the quick glimpse of the papers I published with the five students I had the chance of co-advising. Each relevant publication will be shown later in this presentation, in the bottom of the slides. The work I conducted over the years revolves around three main topics, the content, the user, and the vehicle. The common feature that has attracted my efforts is the mobility. The first part of this presentation addresses the mobility of the content and the users. In a second part, I consider the mobility of vehicles acting as carriers of content. In the first part of this presentation, I present two pieces of work. The first is concerned with large-scale CCN networks. This work leverages the high degree of replication of popular content. In the second piece of work, I consider the mobility of users in cellular environments. This work takes advantage of user gatherings so as to maximize the benefits of each single transmission. Before I show my contribution to CCN, I will first present the standard model of a CCN router. CCN is a communication paradigm built around two messages namely the interest and the data messages. An interest carries the request for a content identified by its name, in replacement of the IP address of the hosting repository. When the interest arrives at a CCN router, the router checks in its content store if a copy of the content was previously stored. If such copy can be found, the router returns a copy of the content on the incoming interface of the interest. Otherwise, the router creates or updates the PIT table which lists the interfaces on which an interest for the same content was received. These states act as breadcrumbs that the data messages will follow back to the source. Once the PIT updated, the router propagates the interest according to a FIB. Once the content located, a copy is sent back to the querier by following the states left in the pit and by buffering a copy of the content in the CS. Our work focuses on the CCN router FIB and how the interests are propagated. The main strategy proposed in Van Jacobson S. seminal paper is flooding. In our work, we propose to update the CCN router model so as to discover copies of replicated content. I present a quick example where I show a CCN network organized in routing domains. The interests are propagated in a similar way as BGP advertisements. Each interest carries in its path field where each domain records their ID as a way of preventing the interests from looping. The interests are also aggregated so there is a single interest traveling the links between and within each domain for each search. When an interest is received by a router, the CS and PIT are used in a similar way as in CCN. The difference lies in the use of a root store where the routes to previously discovered content copies are recorded. If such root doesn't exist, the interest is propagated to all neighboring domains. Once a copy discovered, the data message is returned on the reverse path followed by the interest. The root store is updated so as the path to the closest copy is kept for later searches. We evaluated our content discovery scheme using the CUDA dataset which provides the topology of 36 k as including 6 MBGP routes. We randomly distribute a catalog of 10,000 content. Our results show that the routes we discover are half of the distance of the BGP path to the original content. Our results also confirmed the benefit of the root store as content copies are retrieved in 75% of the cases using a path provided in the RS. Our content discovery scheme for CCN has been proposed in many research projects including FP6ANA, SCANA project with South America and the National Project Connect and the following publications. In a second piece of work. We focus on the increasing demand for accessing data on the move. We consider a geographical area covered by a collection of antennas. The bottleneck of such system is the limited capacity of the wireless access channel. 
we suppose content to be disseminated as a result of a publish, subscribe system where users subscribe to a content. Instead of pushing the content once available, we are interested in measuring how long a content can be delayed so to maximize the number of subscribers within the same cell and to maximize the utility of each single transmission. In the example presented in this slide, we consider four antennas covering a population of eight mobile users. The movements of these users result in various configurations that capture the user gatherings in each four cells. If the content is transmitted as soon as the content available, this strategy we will call the hot potato strategy will result in all antennas transmitting at the same time, in our example four times. However we can see that refraining from transmitting immediately content can help reduce the total number of transmissions. Given a deadline accounting for the duration of validity of the content or the delay that the users can tolerate before receiving the content, we can reduce by half the number of transmissions. This is the case of the Oracle strategy which draws on the prior knowledge of user mobility. Since the Oracle strategy is not achievable because of this prior knowledge, we propose SCOD, a delay in transmission strategy which determines the time of transmissions based on the user gathering ratio. SCOD works as follow. Each antenna measures the ratio of users gathered within a cell over the total of users interested in the same content. The antenna runs this measurement until the transmission deadline is reached. So once the content is available, Scott starts comparing the user gathering ratio against a function that decreases monotonically. The hot potato strategy triggers a transmission as soon as the content is available, in our case instant zero. The oracle takes the highest ratio over the time period preceding the transmission deadline. In the case of SCOD, the transmission occurs when the ratio is equal or greater to the reference value given by the decision function. In our performance evaluation, we tested the following decreasing functions. To evaluate SCOD, we took the baloney dataset which accounts for the movements of 17k vehicles. We propose a deployment plan of access points for the center of the city of Bologna which covers a geographical area of 10 square kilometers. We vary the size of the cells by increasing the total number of access points from a 100 to 500. The deployment plan results of Oranoi tessellation here shown for 100 AP. Our results show that SCOD performs comparably to the Oracle strategy. We also showed that the performance of SCOD improves with smaller sized cells and for content with longer deadlines. SCOD was proposed in the framework of the National Project Data Tweed and was published with my colleagues of INPG and Grenoble. To conclude this first part of my presentation, I will present the research direction we are currently following. We are studying how to combine SCOD to our work on CCN. Scott assumes the content to be available at the access points. To push the content, we are currently studying how our query-based scheme can be used in the core and my hall network. This work is a joint work with Eurocom in south of France and in the framework of the National Project Data Tweet. I will now present the second part of this presentation. This second part consists of three pieces of work conducted with two PhD students. Raoul Gorsitz and Benjamin Barron. All three works take advantage of the everyday mobility of vehicles such as electric cars or public buses operating in cities. In a first work, I exploit the mobility of EVs to offload large amount of data from the Internet. In a second work, I propose a file sharing service built on the network of public buses operating in SF. In a last work, I virtualize the network of public buses in the city of Dublin and evaluate the possibility of migrating VMs between buses in contact. If we look at the mobile entities surrounding us, we can classify their mobility according to the knowledge regarding the structure of their mobility. A first class is the mobility of vehicles such as UPS or FedEx trucks. The trips are controlled and calculated in advance for the purpose of delivering parcels. Then we have the scheduled mobility of the bus operated in cities. 
A third class of mobility is the one of private cars which can be inferable if considering the electric vehicles. The last class is the random mobility of entities such as whales. In my work, I have focused on the mobility of electric vehicles and public buses because of the stops they are forced to make. What is more these stops are made at specific locations such as the charging stations or the bus stops. In first piece of work, I exploit the mobility of EVs to offload large data transfers from the Internet, at the scale of France. In a second piece work, I exploit the mobility of public city to deploy a file sharing service using bus stops as file repositories. To explain how we use mobility to transfer large amount of data on the road network, here is an example where some data need to be sent from Paris to Marseille in south of France. Cars are equipped with hard drives and carry the data from one city to another. The daily trips taken by these cars so equipped creates a transmission channel. To maximize the capacity of this channel, we need to account for cars that actually don't make all the way to Marseille. Some will stop or change direction in Lyon. Considering EVs, allow us to take benefit of the stops electric cars need to make. We take advantage of the time spent to charge the batteries to load data on or off the vehicles depending on their direction of travel. As so, the charging stations act as data exchange relay points where the data is drop off for later pickups by other vehicles for final delivery in our case to Marseille. This work was initiated in the framework of a research grant from Toyota ITC in California and with the Ellies who joined later this work. Our first objective was to assess the capacity enhancement brought to the Internet. This enhancement results from carrying data on private vehicles as they take their daily trips. First, we proposed the deployment of a realistic charging stations placement for France. To this end, we assume that charging stations may be co-located with the gas stations already existing in France. That provides us with 1,024 candidate locations. We then considered the demands issued from the cities of a population of at least a 1,000. To solve this placement problem we used a facility allocation problem, the maximal covering location problem. The objective is to minimize the number of charging stations while maximizing the charging demands within a range of 150 kilometers. The resulting placement consists of 38 charging stations located as depicted on the slide. The next step is to compute the capacity resulting of the daily trips taken by cars on the roads connecting the charging stations. To this end, we used the ad dataset which consists of the traffic volumes recorded by specific sensors located across France. We considered 30% of the cars traveling the roads equipped with a 1 terabyte hard drive. We selected the feasible routes given their travel time. By combining the storage capacity of the cars making those trips, this provides us with a capacity expressed in GBPS. We also consider the leakage of the resulting links which accounts for the ratio of vehicles that fail in delivering their data cargo because of changing direction or breaks down. The resulting capacities for the road of France are provided on this slide. Finally. We evaluated the size of transfers offloaded on the road network of France. We simulate data transfers between Paris and three other cities of France. The purpose is to allocate the flow of vehicles traveling the roads connecting Paris to these cities. To this end we solve a maximum fairness multi-commodity flow problem. In this slide I present some of the results of our performance evaluation. We measure the duration needed to transfer 10 petabytes from Paris to the three cities as a function of the maximal length of the travel paths followed by each transfer expressed in terms of number of offloading spots. Our objective was to show the fairness in the allocation of the transfers as a function of the degree of similarity of the paths they follow. First, we observe that none of the three destinations can be reached with a one-hot travel path. By increasing the logical path maximal length up to two hops, Lyon becomes the only city that can be reached. The duration of the transfer is 3 hours and 12 minutes, 
This long duration is to the not so many two hop paths available between Paris and Lyon. If we consider the travel paths of three hops or less, Bordeaux is now reachable in addition to Lyon. In addition to the two hop paths, there are more candidate paths between Paris and Lyon. As a result, more vehicles are allocated to the transfer to Lyon which decreases its transfer duration. Regarding Bordeaux, too few two or three hop paths are available so this transfer lasts 3 hours and 40 minutes. With four hop travel paths, Marseille is now also reachable but the number of four hop logical paths is still limited between Paris and Marseille and transferring 10 petabytes requires almost 3 hours. Finally, with travel paths of five hops and more, the transfer durations are equivalent among all the demands. This further confirms that the vehicle flow allocation is fair in terms of throughput among all the demands. This work has been completed with the proposal of a STM-like centralized architecture where a controller is in charge of configuring the charging stations acting as forwarding engines. In a second piece of work, we consider the scheduled mobility of public buses and the stops they make to implement a file sharing service. This file sharing service is designed so to avoid the reliance on traditional computer networks. The bus stops are equipped with storage capacities so they can act as file repositories. Passengers can either upload or download a file while in the transmission range of the bus stops. Both requests need to be completed with a deadline otherwise the request is considered as failed. The file once uploaded at a bus stop are synchronized to all other stops so as to be available to all other passengers within the city. The synchronization is achieved by the buses carrying the files while operating their service so no data network is actually needed. A first objective of our work consisted in deploying a fixed number of repositories given a budget. The location of these repositories is defined so to maximize the number of requests that can be satisfied given a deadline. We considered deadlines ranging 20 minutes to 1 hour. A second requirement regarding the location of the repositories is time it takes for the buses to synchronize all the repositories together. To solve the placement problem of the bus stops acting as repositories we model this problem as a maximal covering location problem we solve using the greedy adding with substitution heuristic. I show the result of this placement problem for the city of San Francisco. We analyze the dataset made available by the Muni Transit System of San Francisco and could recreate the movements of almost 500 buses operated on 130 bus lines. We consider that bus stops and the buses equipped with wireless communication capabilities. Buses and bus stops have a transmission range of 250 meters. The upload or download requests are made every 10 minutes. 90% of the requests are download requests while the 10% remaining requests are file uploads. Solving the maximal covering location problem for a budget of 15 repositories gives the following placement. The thickness of the red lines represents the capacity resulting of the buses connecting the 15 repositories. In a first set of evaluations, we evaluate the impact of increasing the number of buses acting as repositories on the title needed to synchronize a file across these repositories. We can see that in most cases, the synchronization time is of an hour and few minutes. We can also see that it takes more time to distribute the copies of the files at the beginning of the file distribution and at the end. Once uploaded, we completed these results by considering the ratio of download requests that can be satisfied within various deadline values. The range of deadlines is taken between 20 minutes and 1 hour 20 minutes. We suppose that the file is first uploaded at one of the bus stops at time zero. Starting from that point the file starts being distributed among the repositories until available at all stops. Recall from previous slide that is takes an average of a little over an hour for a file to be available at all repositories. In this plot I show the ratio of download requests satisfied within three different deadlines. 
we can see that 96% of the download requests are satisfied within 3,600 seconds. For a deadline of 4,800 seconds, 97% of the requests are satisfied which indicates that the benefit is marginal. For small deadlines 1,200 seconds, the system can still satisfy 74%. Once all the repositories synchronize this ratio is of a 100%. To summarize my work in this second part of my presentation, I presented two services. The first service takes benefits of the everyday mobility of EVs to offload large amounts of data from the Internet. This service uses the charging stains as infrastructure nodes where the data is passed from one vehicle to another so as to maximize the capacity resulting of their mobility. In a second service, I exploit the mobility of buses in the context of a city to provide a standalone file sharing service. The bus stops are used as repositories where files are uploaded and made available to other passengers. We showed that an hour is enough to replicate a file across the bus stops in a city as large as San Francisco. In a tour piece of work we remove the need of infrastructure nodes. We evaluate the possibility of migrating virtual machines hosted on the public buses operated in the city of Dublin. We consider the buses equipped with computing and storage resources we virtualize so as to allow the deployment of services. Such services include applications in the domain of intelligent transportation or urban sensing. To allow successful transfers, we analyze the mobility patterns of the buses by dividing the geographical area of interest in a grid pattern of equal sized cells of 100 by 100 meters. In each cell, we plot the bus contacts depending on their duration. By clustering the resulting points, we obtain a heat map of the contact density. We can see that there are specific locations we term hot spots, with higher density of long duration contacts which allow the transfer of typical virtual machines. We selected two hot spots, one located downtown with a high number of contacts and a second we select arbitrary. We simulated the migration of various sizes for the virtual machines. We assume that the transfer starts whenever two buses are in contact the hot spots without any assumption regarding the duration of the contacts. We can see that the larger the virtual machines the longer it takes to successfully transfer a VM. This time accounts of the failed attempts due to short-lived contacts. In most cases, the hotspot one is where it takes less time to successfully transfer the VMs. An interest resulting can be seen for the 200 megabytes VMs. We can see that in this specific case, hotspot 2 is where the VM are successfully transferred after less attempts. This indicates that the ratio of good contacts is higher in hotspot 2 is higher compared to hotspot 1. We are concurrently working on strategies to predict the utility of the contacts to reduce the latency needed to find good contacts.